Pisa is at this point, equidistant from the North Pole and the center of the Earth. Quite a central location when you see it this way. In one of the oldest surviving hermetic fragments called the Kore Cosmu, or Virgin of the World, Isis has this to say to her son Horus. But the right holy land of our ancestors lies in the middle of the earth, and the middle of the human body is the sanctuary of the heart, and the heart is the headquarters of the soul, and that, my son, is the reason why men of this land are more wise. It could not be otherwise, seeing they are born and bred upon earth's heart. The heart of Egypt would have to be the Great Pyramid, and it embodies many more secrets. Let's investigate a few more. Here I've superimposed two instances of the same 3D model. When we draw a circle from the center of the pyramid in plan to the tip of the pyramid in elevation, something amazing happens. We square the circle. The circumference of the circle is equal to the perimeter of the square. This is a sacred diagram that encodes much wisdom. Mathematicians have proven this diagram can't be drawn perfectly because of the transcendental nature of pi. Approximations are all that is possible in flat Euclidean space. In the book The Dimensions of Paradise, John Michel has shown how the first Pythagorean triplet is the key to the wisdom encoded in this diagram. Here, three, four, five triangles set the scale and make it a very easy approximation for anyone to draw with compasses and a ruler. Now brace yourself for the wisdom. The moon and earth actually fit this diagram. The size of the moon compared to the earth is as 3 is to 11 with a 99.97 percent accuracy. The pyramid therefore encodes the relative sizes of moon and earth. The 345 triangle itself contains a secret that unlocks yet more of the mystery. The area of a 345 triangle is 6. 6 is one of very few perfect numbers in math and is the only number in the infinite sea of numbers which is both the sum and product of the same three numbers. The number 6 is associated with the macrocosm which is everything in the universe larger than the human scale. There's a simple mathematical realization that gets you from 6 to 720 that I'll skip over here. Pause the video if you love numbers. When you scale the original diagram by 720, here's what you get. The actual dimensions of the moon and earth in miles. The diagram says the earth's diameter is 7,920 miles and that's 99.97 percent accurate. The diagram says the moon's diameter is 2,160 miles and that's 99.94 percent accurate. That's one precise approximation. John Michel called these the canonical numbers for a good reason. When we lay this diagram over Stonehenge, we see that it fits. The dimensions of Stonehenge match the canonical numbers, but with a shifted decimal place and in English feet rather than in miles. St. Mary's Chapel in Glastonbury is another structure Michelle has found that fits the canonical numbers in English feet. According to the legend, St. Joseph of Arimathea left Jerusalem after the crucifixion and traveled to the Druid Isle of Avalon where he built the first Christian church. This was later rebuilt as St. Mary's Chapel in the 12th century. Joseph of Arimathea is mentioned in all four Gospels as the wealthy man who donated his own prepared tomb that became the Holy Sepulcher. Some say Joseph of Arimathea was Jesus' uncle because he acted like a family member in this regard. In any case, these are the walls that remain from St. Mary's Chapel and here are its dimensions in English feet. The dimensions fit the canonical numbers just like Stonehenge. The original chapel's ground plan resonates with a double Vesica Pisces like we saw in the analysis of the Great Seal of the United States. Thinking of the legend, I overlaid a 5 by 12 rectangle with X's inside that we'll see later in Jerusalem and I discovered that it closely fits the double Vesica Pisces. Perhaps there is truth to the legend of Saint Joseph of Arimathea after all. 
St. Mary's seems to bear the stamp of the Jerusalem rectangle. If shifting the decimal place in the canonical numbers doesn't matter, then there must be something special about the decimal system. Consider Pythagoras's motto, All is Number. The most sacred symbol in the Pythagorean secret worship of number was the tetractus. The diagram consists of points arranged in four rows, with one, two, three, and four points in each successive row. The tetractus symbolizes the four elements, encodes pure musical intervals, is the seed for understanding the harmony of the cosmic spheres, and represents the structure of space itself. The sum of the points in the tetractus is 10. The decimal system we use today, known as base 10, utilizes nine digits plus zero as a placeholder. In fact, the word digit comes from the Latin digitus, which means finger. We naturally assume base 10 must have arisen from the practice of counting on fingers. Peter Plichta, who is both a physicist and a chemist, has shown in his book, God's Secret Formula, that there is much more to the decimal system beyond the physiology of our hands. Believe it or not, the decimal system hinges on the number 81. To understand this, bear with me for a moment and see how all the numbers in the decimal system are hiding under 81. Starting with the decimal point, line up all the numbers sequentially like this. The numbers beyond 9 are shown in parentheses because they are not yet in the decimal place system of single digits. Carrying each parenthesized digit into the decimal system yields a repeating decimal. This infinitely repeating number is equal to the reciprocal of 81. All the numbers really are hiding under 81. This is especially significant because there are exactly 81 stable elements in the universe. No more, no less. The periodic table of the elements lists the elements beyond 83 as subject to radioactive decay, but most are unaware of the fact that unstable elements 43 and 61 don't exist anywhere in the universe unless they are synthesized. Plichta was the first to make this connection and also points out that all 81 stable elements are categorized into 10 types of isotopes which is another reference to the decimal system. So Pythagoras was right, all is number, and the numbers are in base 10. Rena Shesso's book, Math for Mystics, points out some relevant spooky facts. Not only does the moon move through space 81 times faster than the Earth, but the moon has 181st the mass of Earth. Am I alone in thinking this is just too perfect? She also points out that the magic square of the moon is a 9 by 9 square having 81 numbers. Magic squares go back at least 2600 years to ancient China. I get the feeling all of this was known in the distant past. While kids count to 10 on their fingers, theoretical physicists talk about 10 dimensional superstrings, and Kabbalists talk about 10 sephiro on the tree of life. They are all recounting the decimal structure of the universe from different points of view. Traveling a short distance along the Nile, we come to Dashur, site of the lesser known red and bent pyramids. Egyptologists claim these were contemporaneous with the Great Pyramid of Giza. I think the sacred geometry of both pyramids was correctly deciphered at world-mysteries.com. The pyramids at Dashur hold keys to macrocosm and microcosm. First of all, the Red Pyramid isn't as steep as the Great Pyramid. Its face proportions match this red triangle within a pentagram. Tilting up four such triangles until they meet defines the pyramid and its slope. The pentagram is a powerful magical talisman that was a symbol of the Pythagorean school. The pentagram encodes the golden number phi within itself fractally. Phi is one of the most important numbers in mathematics because nature uses it to proportion everything from pine cones to sunflowers and nautilus shells. Even our bodies are based on the golden section. The number five is associated with the microcosm, with life and in the growth of living things. The adjacent bent pyramid 
is the only pyramid with two slope angles. The lower slope is steeper than the Great Pyramid and its face proportions match this blue triangle within a hexagon. Tilting up four such triangles until they meet defines the pyramid's lower slope. The upper slope matches the Red Pyramid, so it's red triangles within pentagons again here. So what's up with all the hexagons and pentagons? It has been said that the great enigma of alchemy is the mystery between macrocosm and microcosm. The word alchemy actually comes from alchemy, which means the way of Egypt. I believe relating 6 to 5 is the essential key encoded at Dashur. Renaissance master Albrecht Dürer made this drawing in his course in the art of measurement with compasses and a ruler. Everything emerges from the Vesica Pisces. Dürer's Melancholia I is one of the most studied pieces of esoteric art. Franz Deckwitz presented the following analysis in 1979 to John Michel, who published it in his 1988 book, The Dimensions of Paradise. The opening of the compasses is the key to the engraving's metrology. The compasses, sphere, measuring stick, and overall proportions all fit the same unit. As already mentioned, the engraving's proportions of 14 to 11 match the Great Pyramid's half-triangle proportion. The objects in the engraving are packed with hermetic symbolism, but the most interesting thing to me is the hidden controlling geometry. It's the alchemical wedding of pentagon and hexagon. Schwaller de Lubix did this study of an Egyptian gateway. Notice the proportions of sixes and fives in the opening, and the octave height of two compared to the overall width of a fundamental one. Henry Lincoln co-wrote Holy Blood, Holy Grail, which became an inspiration for Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code, published more than 20 years later. In The Holy Place, Lincoln revealed what he calls a structured landscape in the former Cathar country surrounding the mysterious village of Rennes-le-Chateau. Again we see the marriage of six and five. The pentagram over the cube in DC is another representation of six and five coming together. Recall how triple sixes and fives are encoded in the Washington Monument as 6,660 inches equals 555 feet. America's monumental obelisk therefore expresses the relationship between macrocosm and microcosm. Moving to a larger scale, the Earth encodes 6 to 5 in temporal and spatial terms. The Earth's precessional cycle measured in years, divided by the Earth's equatorial circumference measured in nautical miles, is precisely equal to 6 divided by 5. Alex B. Geddes discovered relationships in the solar system that express the macrocosm's relationship to the microcosm. These are published in John Martineau's superb Little Book of Coincidence. The relationships Geddes found are ratios between the products of mean orbital radii of planets in our solar system. More specifically, the ratios each equal 6 divided by 5, plus a small factor that must be added in each case to balance the equalities. Each product is a symmetrical relationship between inner rocky planets and outer gas giants. I notice that each one of the factors added to balance the equalities encodes 864, the same number you learned in the Stonehenge and San Francisco episodes is the number of the Sun. How incredibly apropos! In mathematics, phi and pi are two of the most important numbers. They can be related in the following way. 6 divided by 5 times phi squared equals pi. This equation is an extremely accurate approximation, but is not exact, and as such is classified by mathematicians as a coincidence. Are all of these things just pure coincidence or evidence of hyperdimensional resonance? For a more complete answer to that, you'll have to wait for the Paris episodes. For the next astonishing example of sixes over fives, 
will visit the holy city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is one of the oldest cities in the world, having been continuously inhabited for close to six millennia. The old walled city that occupies an area of less than one square kilometer is sacred in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is the most sacred place in Christianity, where Jesus was both crucified and entombed before rising from the dead. The site where Solomon's and Herod's temples were located is actively debated. The only thing the researchers seem to agree upon is that it was somewhere on the Temple Mount. Locating the temple precisely is a priority for Jews, because the rock of foundation within the temple's Holy of Holies is the most sacred place in Judaism. For centuries it has been assumed that this rock is the same stone whereupon Abraham nearly sacrificed Isaac and from which Muhammad ascended into heaven, namely the bedrock upon which the Dome of the Rock stands today. You can see in this cutaway how the Sufi shrine was built to worship this bedrock. My favorite theory comes from Dr. Asher Kaufman in 1991. He claims that the Jewish foundation stone is located just north of the Dome of the Rock, in a small section of exposed bedrock currently under the diminutive Dome of the Tablets. The echo of tablets in the dome's name is actually circumstantial evidence suggesting correlation with the tablets of the Ten Commandments. These most famous tablets were stored in the Ark of the Covenant, which of course was located within the Holy of Holies within Solomon's Temple. However, the main reason I subscribe to this theory is that it fits the larger geometry of the city, as proposed by John Michel and Christine Rohn in their book Twelve Tribe Nations. Michel and Rohn have drawn a 5 by 12 rectangle over Jerusalem, matching the proportion of rectangles we've studied all over the world. The Jerusalem rectangle is anchored in the ancient Jaffa Gate, an opposite city wall corner point here. Its right edge parallels the Temple Mount. Richard Heath showed in Sacred Number that when we draw equal X's within the rectangle, the crossing points pass directly over the Rock of Calvary inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre where Jesus was crucified, and over the Jewish Rock of Foundation under the Dome of the Tablets. In other words, these X's precisely mark the holiest spots in Christianity and Judaism. Measuring the rectangle uncovers something more. The length is equal to 1,728 cubits of 1.728 feet each. That's a double reference to the number we learned in Washington, D.C. symbolizes a cube. In Judaism, the Holy of Holies within Solomon's Temple had very specific proportions as described in the Torah. It was a cube measuring 20 cubits on each side. The holiest spot in Islam is Mecca. More specifically, it is the Kaaba within Mecca, which all Muslims are supposed to visit at least once in their lives. Kaaba means cube. Indeed, the object of their veneration is a giant black cube. The word Kabbalah, which means knowledge in Jewish mysticism, also references a cube. In Greek mythology, Apollo and Artemis were born on the small island of Delos. As the story goes, the citizens of Delos consulted the oracle at Delphi to learn how to defeat a plague sent by Apollo. The oracle responded that they must double the volume of their cubic altar to Apollo. This rather difficult problem involving the cube root of two was known as the Delian problem in mathematics which was later solved by the Pythagorean philosopher Archytas. Why are so many of the most important places symbolized by cubes? Recall that the cubit that measures Jerusalem is 1.728 English feet exactly. 1.728 is equal to 6 over 5 raised to the third power. I suggest you do the math to verify this is so. Come to think of it, the word cubit clearly comes from the word cube. So Jerusalem is symbolized by the volume of a cube whose edge length relates macrocosm to microcosm. 
If you dimension the Jerusalem rectangle in this way, with two depictions of six and five, you'll see the X's themselves as representations of the great enigma of alchemy, namely the relationship between six and five. Perhaps not surprisingly, the cubit that measures 1.728 English feet is actually the canonical Egyptian cubit. Author Ahmed Osman puts forward the controversial but never refuted theory that Moses was actually the Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten. Both were powerful monotheists who were educated in Egypt. It's certainly a theory worth contemplating. Many of the most significant events in Jesus' life are lined up along an axis. First of all, Jesus spent time teaching his disciples on the Mount of Olives. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday through this oldest of gates in Jerusalem city walls, called the Golden Gate in Christian tradition. I can't help but think of the bridge in San Francisco. Here's Giotto's depiction of Mary's parents, Joachim and Anne, meeting at the Golden Gate. In Jewish tradition, this same gate is the one through which the Messiah will enter Jerusalem at some unknown point in the future. However, Suleiman the Magnificent sealed off the Golden Gate in 1541 literally to prevent the Messiah's entrance, and the Golden Gate and Temple Mount remain under Islamic control today. As you know, this tension between Muslims and Jews has persisted up to the present day. Jesus upset the money changers tables in Herod's temple here, if we accept the Kaufman theory as to the location of the second temple. The Garden of Gethsemane is the place where Jesus prayed the night before his crucifixion. This is the place where he is said to have sweat drops of blood. As tradition has it, the crucifixion happened at Calvary, and his body was placed in the Holy Sepulchre just a few dozen feet away. Isn't it amazing that most of the important events in Christianity took place along an axis connecting the center of the X's in this diagram? Before we leave Jerusalem, I want to detour to a place you'd probably never expect me to go. Winnipeg, Canada. It's the capital of Manitoba, eh? Architectural historian Frank Albo has discovered the Manitoba Legislative Building is not only a reconstruction of Solomon's Temple, but is loaded with secrets in plain sight. The architect Frank Worthington Simon designed this 1920 building to be veiled in allegory and illustrated with symbols only his Freemasonic brothers would understand. In fact, every premier who worked in this building from 1870 to 1967 was a Freemason. Two Egyptian sphinxes flank the entrance, just as they do in front of the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C. The top of the dome features a 13-foot-high gilded statue of Mercury, the same golden boy we'll meet again in Paris. After going up two flights of 13 steps, one enters a cubic space measuring 66.6 .6 feet on edge. We'll uncover the unexpected meaning of 666 in the most surprising of places in Paris. It's probably not what you think. According to Albo's research, two 13-foot-high bronze bisons identify this as a cleansing room in temple vernacular. Going up another flight of 13 steps, one arrives in the rotunda. There's a mural on the wall of the rotunda above the entrance to the Manitoba Legislative Assembly that ostensibly depicts World War I. However, a man wearing a white robe with exposed chest, being supported by his brother, identifies him as an initiate in the first Masonic degree ceremony. Albo identifies this mural as the altar in what is secretly an initiation chamber. Looking up in the rotunda, you see the underside of the central dome the golden boy is perched upon, and looking down a level through an oculus in the floor reveals a fascinating space called the Pool of the Black Star. Just off the rotunda is the Lieutenant Governor's reception suite, which is the only space in the building off-limits to the public. Albo got special permission to measure the chamber, and discovered it's a cube, having an edge length of 20 cubits. These are precisely the same dimensions as the Holy of Holies within Solomon's Temple. 
a place that was also obviously off-limits to the public. But if this represents the Holy of Holies within Solomon's temple, where is the Ark of the Covenant? Albo discovered it's directly above this suite on the building exterior. The war chest, as it's known, is flanked by two warriors, which one can accurately identify as Raiders of the Lost Ark. This building is clearly amazing, but why is it here? Albo points out that Winnipeg is at the geographical center of North America. The black star at the heart of the legislative building was deliberately placed upon this naval point. Okay, but what is the building really doing? I think the Manitoba Legislative Building was designed as a magical talisman to harvest or in some sense control the energies of North America. Consider a much older example of this type of talismanic magic. Old Sarum, which is the center point of ley lines in England, dates from the same era as Stonehenge, Avebury, and Silbury Hill. This radiating topology reminds me of one other magical artifact, the sun disk worshipped during the reign of King Tut's father, the pharaoh Akhenaten. If you think believing in magic is childish, consider Walt Disney's so-called Magic Kingdom. Did you know Disneyland has a mysterious Club 33, which is not open to the general public? We know from studying DC how important the number 33 is to Masons. Club 33 memberships cost $20,000, and it's the only place in Disneyland where alcohol is served. There's clearly more going on in the Magic Kingdom than meets the eye. I think the black star at the center of North America holds a much deeper secret. Physicist Nassim Haramein, whom you'll hear more about in Rome, believes that Moses took a compact power source out of the Great Pyramid and placed it inside the Ark of the Covenant before he left Egypt. Haramein showed how the Ark fits precisely within the misnamed sarcophagus inside the King's Chamber within the Great Pyramid. It was misnamed because no mummy has ever been found in an Egyptian pyramid. By the way, the granite box's exterior volume is exactly double its interior volume, a mathematical relationship echoed thousands of years later in the Delian problem that plagued the Greeks. Considering the evidence, I think the Ark was an Egyptian artifact before it became the most sacred object in Judaism. In any case, Hermine believes the power source inside the Ark was a mini black hole. During their exodus from Egypt, the Bible says the Israelites followed a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Hermine claims the mini black hole stored in the Ark would have produced just such a fiery vortex rising like a pillar. Haramine's physics show that stars are really black holes under a mantle of trapped matter. Sunspots are black because they literally are vortices in the mantle that expose the black hole inside the sun. The pool of the black star reveals this great cosmic secret to those who can decode the secrets in plain sight. Perhaps there is nowhere else in the world with more layers of history and symbolism than Jerusalem. I can think of no better example of this than in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Its architecture is a patchwork made from so many untold layers. Calvary Chapel is built on the first foot or so of the rock upon which Jesus is said to have been crucified. Excavation that took place in 1973 revealed a chapel some 15 feet under this rock, called the Tomb of Adam, where the first human skull is said to be visible in the rock face. In fact, the term Calvary comes from the Latin Calvariae Locus, which is Golgotha in Greek, or Place of the Skull in English. Prior to the first Christian Emperor Constantine the Great repurposing this site as the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, it had been a Temple of Venus. Before the Romans worshipped Venus, she was known in the Greek world as Aphrodite. And if we dig deeply enough, we find yet another layer on top of the Egyptian Isis. The notion of Christianity layering Egyptianism is nothing new. 
Here is Albrecht Durer's Renaissance depiction of the Man of Sorrows by the Column. Note Christ's unmistakable Egyptian crook and flail posture. 